right, everybody. Let's get this day started. God has blessed on, us to see a new day, and we are excited just to see what the Lord is about to do for us on this day. So listen, as you come in this morning, go ahead and just say hello, not just to me, but to everyone that's watching with you. And then let us know that you're in agreement with us today. Go ahead and get that morning devotion scripture up. If this is your first time watching, that scripture is Psalm 118 and 24, which is our daily declaration, by the way, because in spite of what happens, we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. God bless you, Evangelist Jerlene Dort. You're the first one in on today, and we say good morning to you also. Thank you for being in agreement with us on today, getting that morning devotion scripture up. Little sis, sis, God bless you. Thank you for joining us on today, and good morning to you as well. And thank you for being in agreement with us, getting that morning devotion scripture up. Sister Lola, God bless you and good morning to you. Thank you so much and um, thank you for the compliment. I try to do my best at least on Tuesdays and thank you for being in agreement with us. We appreciate you so much. Jeanette Deloach, God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for joining us on today. Good morning to you. And thank you for being in agreement with us on today. Mother Mary Thomas, God bless you, woman of God. Thank you for joining us on today and for being in agreement with us. Nancy Bowman, thank you for coming in on today. We appreciate you. And um, thank you for joining us. My God, thank you. Thank you. You all are so kind. You all are so kind. Thank you. Thank you for the compliments on this morning. Mother Ida Thomas, God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Nancy Bowman is in agreement with us on today. Mother LaRue Hopkins, good morning to you, woman of God. Thank you so much for joining us. Mary Washington Bailey, God bless you and good morning to you as well. Thank you for the agreement, Mother Thomas. Chanel Crump, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us on today and for being in agreement with us. Mother Hopkins is in agreement with us as well. Good morning, Sister Tiffany. Thank you for joining us. And um, you all do what we've asked you to do. Get that morning devotion scripture up. Um, go ahead and let us know that you're in agreement with us on today. And I want you to go ahead and share this video. Tag someone in it. Let them know that you're praying for them. Let them know that you're thinking about them. And as we say here, on morning devotion every morning a little bit of encouragement goes a long way you never know what anyone is going through at the moment and just your act of love and kindness may be the very thing that they need to make it through the day and of course we want you to go ahead and get those prayer requests up on today of course we'll be praying at the end of our live stream lord willing and um, we're believing God with you and for you on today. God bless you, Cheryl Osborne. Thank you and good morning to you. Thank you for being in agreement with us on today. Sister Erica Tony. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. And thank you for being in agreement with us. Glory to God. And uh, Mary Washington Bailey is in agreement with us on this morning. And she chooses to believe and only say what God says about her. Yes, that's awesome. We got about another minute before we get into it. Um, so go ahead and do those things that we've asked. Say hello. Let us know that you're in agreement with us. Go ahead and tag someone. Invite them in to watch with you. Share this video Go ahead and put it in all of your group chats and your family chats and all of that good stuff, however you get the word out. And um, let's, let's get this word out to as many people as we can. Dr. Karen McGee, God bless you. Good morning to you, woman of God. And thank you for being in agreement with us. And um, she's choosing the promises of God. Matter of fact, she chose the promises of God, which means, listen, my God, she's already done it. 
That means it's established and it's done. Glory to God. And um, we appreciate that on today. Let's get started. Psalm 118 and 24. Good morning, Lulu. Thank you for joining us on today. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. You all already know what to do. Begin to command your day. Speak over your day. What are you expecting on today? So today is in every day. We choose to rejoice. We choose to be glad. We choose to be happy, to be healed, to be whole. What is it that you're expecting on today? Good morning to my wife on this morning, joining us on today. We thank you and we love you, babe. Thanks so much for being here with us on this morning. Cheryl Osborne says she chooses to believe the word of God. Yes, that's a good one. And um, as we're talking about living by the mouth of God, my God, we live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, according to Matthew 4 and 4. Sister Deanna says, I choose to move forward. Yes, we're moving forward, forward into blessings, forward into miracles, forward into healing. My God, whatever it is, we're not looking behind us, but we're looking forward. My mom is in the room on this morning. Thank you for joining us, mom. And thank you for being in agreement with us on today. My God, Jeanette Deloach says she chooses the strength and straight paths leading to God. That's a good one, Sister Jeanette. Amen. God bless you. Mother Mary Thomas says, I choose to trust God in everything. Nancy Bowman says, I choose peace and to rest in the Lord. My God, you all are blessing me on this morning. Of course, every day I choose the promises of God. According to 2 Corinthians chapter 1, and verse 20, it says, every promise of the Lord is yes, and in him, amen. So the promises of God, my God, are not only guaranteed, but they have no expiration date. God will do what he promised that he would do. That's a good one. Thank God for you. Evangelist Geraldine Dort says, I choose to have peace. Thank God for you on today. Mary Jones, good morning to you on today. We appreciate you joining us. Amen. Um, my wife says she chooses the promises of God. We're in agreement on this morning. That's three of us that are choosing the promises of God. You all can join in with us, and um, let's gas up this plane to get ready to take off. We got a couple more minutes my mom says she chooses eternal life. Yes, that eternal life that can only come through Christ Jesus. He's the way. He's the truth, my God, and he's the path to life eternal. No man comes to the Father but by him. Chanel Crump says she chooses to believe God. My God, Mary Washington Bailey says that she chooses to love God the unlovable. My God, you all are just blessing us on today. Chanel Crump gets another one up and says she chooses to believe God. My God, she's she's doubling down on it. My God, that means she's standing on it today. My God, and, and, and listen, she, she didn't get no witness, so she witnessed it for herself. She was her own witness on this morning to say that she believes God. And listen, if there's about 10 of you that want to agree with her on today, come on, just put it up and say, I believe God. Yes, we believe God in spite of what it looks like. We believe God because we know that he's able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we can ask or think. Yes, my God, we believe God on today. Let's go. Let's get into agreement, my God, with, with Sister Chanel on this morning. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Mother Hopkins. Glory to God. Good morning. Good morning, Sylvia Davis. We appreciate you so much joining us. Thank you, Evangelist Dorch, Mary Jones, my God, Sister Lulu. All of these people are in agreement with you, Sister Chanel, on this morning. 
My God, we believe God over here. Come on, somebody. My God, Nancy Bowman says she chooses to be healed. My God, Sylvia Davis says she believes God always. My God. Now, listen, go ahead and get a praise up on this morning. You know how we do as early risers. We give God the praise early every morning. Glory to God. Why? Because we are expecting God to bless our entire day. Because when we put him first, we know that everything else falls into line. Yes, my God, according to Matthew 6 and 33, that if we seek him first, my God, he's going to add all of the things that we need unto us. God bless you, Rhonda Lowe Smith. She's choosing God on today. My God, and that's powerful because when you choose God, you get everything that he has. That's a whole revelation for somebody on today. <laughs> Glory to God. My God, when we choose God, we get everything that he has. My God, and Cheryl Osborne is in agreement with you on today. Well, thank you all for joining us on today. Um, if you're watching by YouTube or, or Facebook, um, we thank you. That My name is Maurice E. Gregory, and this is your morning devotion for today. And uh, we meet here every weekday morning at 7 a.m. Central, 6 a.m. Mountain, 5 a.m. Pacific, and 8 a.m. on the East Coast. And um, this is a time of prayer, praise, and proclamation, and um, we're helping you to get your day started with some positivity and some purpose. And um, listen, we, we added a third page um, temporarily, so if you see um, the third Maurice E. Gregory page, that's actually our business page, and um, we want you to go over there and subscribe to that channel on Facebook um, because I did find out that um, as of the 22nd of this month, um, our streaming software will only, it'll only send um, the videos to a business page on Facebook, and we do have a business page that is active. Um, so if you type in Maurice E. Gregory and you see the Morning Devotion logo, amen, that's the page that we want you to subscribe to. So you don't have to come off of you off of Facebook to go over to YouTube. That's some good news for you all that that wanted to continue watching on Facebook. So go over there and follow us on that page. Subscribe to it. Um, we have about we have we have about um, 800 followers on that page. Um, we have about 800 followers on that page. So let's get let's get that page up to over a thousand um, by the end of the week. Um, let's get our subscribers on YouTube to over a hundred if we can by the end of the week. And um, listen, let's get the word out that we are here, that we are on the air. If you're watching on Facebook, hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit that like button and um, let's get started. We got about six likes so far this morning. Thank you all for that. And um, listen, just send some of those hearts up and all of that. Push us up in the algorithm and let's have a great time in the Lord. Well, it's time to take off. We've been um, dealing with the series for almost two weeks um, entitled Living by the Mouth of God. Um, so go ahead and just put that up on today. There's about 30 of you watching right now. Um, put it up and say, I'm living by the mouth of of God. I'm living by the mouth of God. Of course, our um, base scripture was found in Matthew 4 and 4, Matthew 4 and 4. Um, and that scripture is man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds or comes from the mouth of God. This is how we as people of God live. Um, and, and as we get more and more into this series, um, I want to begin to help you to understand um, that, that as believers, yes, God blesses us from his hand. And, um, you know, it's great that the things that we need, God provides it with his hand. 
but ultimately God wants us to live um, from his mouth, meaning, my God, that once we understand God's word, um, once we make what he says, glory to God, once we begin to make this thing a part of who we are, when we hear the word, when we receive the word, when we become the word, glory to God, we no longer have to wait for a handout from God, but we understand that if God speaks it, that it's already done. It's happened. It is what it is. Come on, somebody. My God, if God says it, it's already established. Glory to God. So we're living by the mouth of God. Therefore, watch this. Here's a whole revelation for somebody that's going to get it on today. We now go to God not asking him for things. Glory to God. When we're living by the mouth of God, my God, we're no longer going to him asking him for things. But when we're living by his mouth, that means that whatever has been spoken, whatever has been said, we already have it so we can literally enter into the presence of the Lord. Glory to God. Just believing him, praising him and thanking him for what already is my God. Somebody ought to put a praise up right there. Glory to God, because there's so much freedom in that when you no longer have to wonder whether something is God's will or not for you to have glory to God. His word is his will. What he speaks is what he intends. Glory to God. My God, what he says is established. What he says is already done. He doesn't have to go back and redo something that's already been spoken. Come on, somebody. The Bible tells us that if our ways please God, that no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly before him. My God, my God. So listen, if it's in line with God's word, my God, and if it's a good thing, the Father has made us a promise, my God, that that thing will happen just for you. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I don't care what it looks like right now. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what problems are facing you what obstacles you have to overcome, you've got to know that if God says it, it's going to come to pass. Come on, Numbers 23 and 19. This is something that we use often here, and I use it often because you've got to get it in your spirit. Numbers 23 and 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he's going to do it. If he spoke it, he's going to make it good. My God is going to get good for you. God is going to bless you. He's going to bring it to pass. Glory to God. Psalms 37 and 4 says that if we delight ourselves in the Lord, what is he going to do? He's going to give us the desires of our heart. Glory to God. He's going to give us the desires of our heart. Right after that, verse 5 says that if we commit our ways to the Lord, if we commit our ways to the Lord and trust also in him, he's going to bring it to pass. What does it mean to commit our ways? That means to live right, to walk upright, to do everything you can, my God, to live a holy and a separated and a sanctified life. My God, when we commit our ways to him, the Bible says that he's going to bring it to pass. What is he going to bring to pass? He's going to bring to pass the desires of our heart. Glory to God. Because when we're living by the mouth of God, our desires line up with his will. We're not going to desire anything that's outside of the will of God. We trust him in everything. My God, we don't lean to our own understanding. We acknowledge him in all of our ways. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs 16 and 19 that when we commit our thoughts to the Lord, our thoughts means our plans, our aspirations, glory to God, our ambitions, all of these things we commit to God 
And watch this. The Bible says that our thoughts, our plans, our ambitions, whatever it is that we desire will be established. In other words, what that's saying is that God will make you successful in your plans. He will cause your plans to succeed. My God, he will cause your thoughts, my God, to succeed. He will cause your imaginations to come to pass. My God, this is why the Bible tells us in the New Testament in Ephesians 3 and 20, Ephesians 3 and 20, my God, that he's able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we can ask or think according to the power that works within us. My God, that imagination that you have, that thought that you have, that dream that you have, glory to God, the plans that you've written down. Some of you haven't even written them down, but you still have plans. You still have goals. You still have ambition. You still have things in this life that you want to do, that you want to accomplish. Well, the Bible tells us here that if we commit those things to the Lord, if we give them to him, that he will cause all of those things to succeed. And when he causes them to succeed, that simply means that he's going to do more than what you can even imagine. Glory to God. He's going to bless your imagination. He's going to cause your dreams and your goals and your plans, your ambitions to come to pass. Glory to God. And somebody ought to get a praise up right there because there are some things that you've been dreaming about, that you've been talking about. Glory to God. My God, that you've been planning, that you've been pondering on some of you for years. God says that the moment that you commit those things to me and really give them to me, glory to God, you have to realize that God is the one that even put the imagination in your heart and in your mind in the first place. So therefore, he said, I put it there in order that you might give it back to me. And when you give it back to me, God said, I'm literally going to show you, my God, how I want that plan to be fulfilled in you. Glory to God, because we can be confident in this very thing, according to Philippians 1 and 6, that the same God that began the work in us, how did he begin the work in us? He began it with the thought. He began it, he begun it with a plan. Hope I'm speaking proper English today. <laughs> Glory to God. My God, he began that thing in you with a thought, with a plan. Glory to God. With an ambition, with a desire. That's how the work began in you. So he said, listen, because I began that work in you, I'm the God that's faithful to make sure that that plan, that ambition, the thing, glory to God, that I place went in you succeeds. He does not plant anything in us that's not, deter that's not predetermined to bring success. You know, we talked about the parable of the sower and the seed, that, that seed that has been planted in you, my God, God intends for it to bring forth a harvest. Glory to God. We talked about that 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold. It is God's will, my God, that you completely understand what he wants to do in your life. And the greater your understanding, the greater your harvest. Glory to God. God wants to produce a harvest in you that starts with that thought, that plan, that ambition that he's placed within you. Glory to God, my God. And there's many of you, my God, that are chasing it, my God, but we should not chase it. We commit that thing to God and then we continue to chase him. God, you gave me the vision. You gave me the thought. You gave me the plan. You gave me ambition. My God, it's not wrong to have ambition. It's not wrong to, to want more. This is how God works. This is the seed that he plants in us as people and especially as believers. My God, as believers, we ought to have great ambition. We ought to have great expectation. 
Are you all getting this? We ought to, Lord, glory to God, strive for better and for more. We ought to want more for our lives because we're the children of God. That's how God operates. He didn't create us to be menial, to be small thinkers. Are you all getting this? This is, an, uh, this is what we're, we, we talk about when we talk about imagination. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to surround myself with people in this season of my life my God, that has vivid and great imaginations. I, I, it's hard for me to be around people. My God, it's hard for me to be in groups of people that, that think small, that, that don't want more, and, and all they do in life is, is talk about people and you know um, try to pull people down. And, and all of I, I, I try not, I try to really separate myself from those people. My God, because watch this, I need to be around people that are big thinkers, that have great imaginations, because this is how God wants us to move in this season. There's too much ahead of us. My God, there's too much ahead of us to be caught up with people that are determined to be stuck in the same place. They, they're, you know, they, they don't have any fruit. They're not displaying any fruit. Their words are fruitless. Are you all getting this? They, they don't speak life. They, you know, all they do is gossip and, and just keep up mess. Every mess that, that goes on in any place, their name is already in the midst of it. Whenever drama, come on, somebody, you, you all know some people like this. If drama was a person, my God, their, their picture would be right next to the word drama. But, but in order to see and to be what God wants me to be, I have to surround myself in this season with people that have vivid imaginations that understand that God is able to do anything. My God, and this is how God wants us to live. This is how he wants us to move. Am I talking to anybody on today? My God. So watch this. Those of you that that have vision, that have plans. Come on, I'm going to give you the key. You have ambition. You want to do great things. God has placed that in your heart, in your spirit. Watch this. Proverbs 16 and 19. Commit that thing to the Lord. Commit that thing to the Lord. My God. And then the Bible says that he will cause your plans to to succeed. Glory to God. Give God your thoughts. Give God your vision. Give God your ambition and watch God, my God, work that thing out for you. He's going to establish it. This is what the Bible says in Proverbs 16 and 19. He said he's going to establish your plans. My God, he's going to cause them to succeed. My God, and you're going to see your vision come into clear view. My God, as God moves you from faith to faith, from glory to glory, from place to place, glory to God. My God, that's what God wants us to do. Amen. Come on, get some praise up on today. My God, we got to get, we got one verse of scripture that I need to share on today. Thank you all for joining us. Again, if you're on YouTube, subscribe, like, comment, and, um, you know, listen, join our community. And um, we welcome all of the new early risers, those of you that are watching um, for the first time. Um, I thought I seen um, a, a young man named Arthur Coble on the line. You all say hello to Arthur and welcome him in on today. He's watching on Facebook. Glory to God. And uh, we thank God for him. Um, Leslie Smith, thank God for her as well. Um, an old friend of ours, um, but new to the early risers. You all welcome um, Leslie Smith on today. Um, great woman of God, and we thank God for her. Amen. And um, listen, we, we want to go today to the book of Hebrews. Um, the book of Hebrews in the New Testament, chapter number 4 verses 12 and 13. Um, Nancy, if you would, get those scriptures up. Um, of course, um, from whatever page you're watching on Facebook, um, if you're watching on the Maurice Gregory page with my picture on it, um, you know, you can stay there for the time being. 
Um, but I do have another page, um, Maurice E. Gregory. If you go over there, you'll see the Morning Devotion logo, okay? Um, you'll see the Morning Devotion logo. That's the page that we want to migrate over to. Um, I'll share it later on my Facebook page. Um, but we want to we want to migrate over to that page because that's the page um, we'll have to share content on Facebook here in a few days. So go over there, subscribe to that channel as well. And um, we're believing God with you. I'll change the name of it, um, you know, to Morning Devotion with Maurice Gregory um, probably later today. So you'll know the difference between the two. Um, but Hebrews chapter four. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 12 and 13. Um, I'm going to read it until you're hearing. I'm reading from um, the New Living Translation. So if you have your Bibles and you want to follow along, um, Hebrews chapter 4, um, verses 12 and 13. And um, we'll put it there, here on the screen as well. Uh, matter of fact, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Nancy, for getting that up for us. Um, Listen to hear what the word says. Um, if you have your Bibles, you can follow along. If not, we got you. It says, for the word, and um, I added in here, the promises of God is alive, active, and powerful. Okay? I want to read that first part again because I need you to get it. Um, for the word or the promises of God is alive, active, and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes, and he is the one who whom we are accountable to. My God, my God, that's powerful on today. You may have read it in the King James Version where it says that the word of the Lord is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword um, cutting between joint and marrow, um, between soul and spirit. And um, the King James Version says that the word of God is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. This is a powerful scripture on today that we're talking about on today because when we understand or begin to understand what it means to live by the mouth of God, um, there's three words in this particular passage of scripture um, in the New Living Translation that I want to deal with. Now, um, of course, I want you to read chapter four um, of the book of Hebrews in its entirety. Um, we dealt we dealt with this particular chapter um, when we were talking about um, being devoted to rest. And um, in this particular chapter, um, the writer of the book of Hebrews um, began to compare the spiritual rest um, to the promised land that God promised the children of Israel. Um, he promised them rest, which means that he spoke um, the word of God to them. He promised them that he would bring them out of Egypt into the promised land. But if you read that scripture or that chapter, the Bible says, my God, that, that many of them fell short of it. They, they weren't able to enter into that rest because of their unbelief their unbelief in the word of God. They didn't believe that God was able to deliver. They didn't believe that God was able to bring them out of Egypt into the promised land, even though they had seen all of the things that God had done for them, even in Egypt. My God, God showed him, showed them his wonders. Glory to God. He showed them his wonders. He showed them how he was able to deliver my God, they went from being slaves, my God, to being wealthy. My God, they went from being beaten and, and having hard burdens put upon them to having no burden. God delivered them. My God, he made them rich. He healed everybody that came out of Egypt. The Bible said that, that when they came out, there was no feeble knees among them. 
which means that there was not even any sickness, my God, among them when they came out of Egypt, God fed them. My God, one, one, the one scripture says in, in the book of Deuteronomy, he said, listen, I supplied for you 40 years. I kept you in the wilderness. My God, I kept you all of these years. Your clothes didn't wear out. One scripture said your shoes even grew with your feet. Glory to God. God performed all of these miracles. He gave them manna from heaven. My God, when they got tired of eating bread, he gave them quails, which is the equivalent of chicken. Glory to God. My God. So he gave them chicken and biscuits. They got tired of eating chicken. He said, okay, I'll give you fish. You know, God supplied for them. He supplied for them. He, he moved on their behalf. He blessed them for those 40 years. But, but many of them, almost all of them, except for two of them, you know, over a million people came out of Egypt, but only two of them entered into the promised land. You know, in other words, 999,998 people died in the wilderness because of their unbelief. They really didn't believe that God was able to deliver them. They murmured. They complained. Every obstacle that they faced, they charged God foolishly. Glory to God. When the Egyptians were pursuing them, they began to cry out and they said, well, listen, Moses, I guess it wasn't enough graves in Egypt. So you just bought us out here to die. Glory to God. This is how unbelief works. My God, whenever a problem arose, they began to say that it was better off for us to be in Egypt. Glory to God. You know, that's how unbelief talks. You know, and, and believe it or not, we still have a lot of a lot of Christians talking that way. Whenever they have a problem in the church or whenever they have a problem with church people or whenever they have an obstacle that they face, they they go getting getting reckless with their mouth and, and say, listen, you know, I was better off in the world. I've actually heard people say that. I was better off in the world. I was better off before I was saved. Come on, somebody. You know, when the truth is, really, that's just foolish talk. You know, they had forgot. They had forgot that when they were in Egypt, they were slaves. You know, no, no matter what's happening in the wilderness, my God, I'm better off now than I was than when I was a slave. Come on, somebody. My God. But the problem is, is that God delivered them out of Egypt but they didn't get the Egypt out of them. They still had the Egyptian mindset. My God, they couldn't be free because their minds and their spirits and their souls were still in slavery. They were still chained up and bound. Glory to God. And many times we miss what God has for us because we're still chained up and bound. Glory to God. My God, we're bound by our past. We're bound by our childhood. We're bound by the things that kept us from having a relationship with God. My God, we're still blaming our parents for not having a good childhood or whatever the case may be. My God, we're still blaming the people that hurt us, the people, glory to God, that came up against us. But watch this, people of God, in order for us to get to where God wants to take us, where he's already promised us. Come on, we already told you, my God, that God's word is true. It's established. It's done. Come on, somebody. So how long will we remain in that place that God is really trying to bring us out of? We're not believing him. We're not trusting him. Glory to God. And watch this, people of God. You've got to get this because when you read this chapter, my God, a scripture is quoted there that we quote often, that in the day that we hear the voice of God, whenever the word of God is delivered, the Bible says that we should not harden our hearts. This is what happened to them. Glory to God. They could not receive the word of God because their hearts were hardened. Glory to God. Their hearts were hardened. That seed could never be planted. That seed could never germinate and grow. That seed could never bring forth a harvest. Glory to God, because they had so much fallow ground in their heart. God was sowing seed, constantly telling them 
that it's going to be all right. Showing them that he had them. Come on, somebody. Showing him that he was able to pull them out to make a way to open doors. Come on. Every day he fed them. Every day he kept them. Every day he brought them through trials and tests and tribulation. Glory to God. Even after drowning Pharaoh's army in the Red Sea, after bringing them across on dry ground, glory to God, they still had a hardened heart and could not receive the word of God. My God, can you imagine that? Can you imagine seeing God do all that he did? If God had just allowed you to be born in that time and he brought you out of Egypt, he fed you every day. My God, you seen the Red Sea part and you walked across on dry ground and then you watched God drown all of your enemies that were pursuing you to pull you back into slavery. And then after all of that, you still choose not to believe the word of God. Well, the Bible compares that to us that are living today because there's still many of us, some of you that are listening to me right now, you've seen miracles, you've seen signs, you've seen wonders, you've seen God do great things. Glory to God. My God, God has healed your body. God has made ways for you. He's allowed you to overcome problems. Some of you were addicted and God broke that addiction off of your life. You no longer have addiction, my God. And after all of that, you still have a hardened heart when it comes to the word of God. But here the Bible says that in the day that you hear the voice of God, in the day that the word of God is presented to you, don't harden your heart. Glory to God. Don't, don't reject the word of God, but allow that word of God to be planted in you in order that you might bring forth a harvest. Glory to God. That 30-fold, that 60-fold, that 100-fold, God is glorified when we produce fruit. God is glorified when we bring forth a harvest. God is glorified, glory to God, when we make life changes, when we level up, as the world says. My God, when we become greater in him, this is how we glorify God. It does not glorify God for us to walk in unbelief. My God, for us to harden our hearts and not, not receive the word that is being spoken. Glory to God. That's right, Rhonda Lowe Smith. We believe God over here. Come on, somebody. We believe the word of God. We cannot separate God from his word. So when the word of God is presented, the logos, the rhema, we can't reject that word because it reveals the very nature. Glory to God. It reveals the nature, the character, and the essence of who God is. So when we get to these two verses, watch this. The Bible says here, and I want to talk about three words on today. I'm just about out of time. It says that the word of God is alive, active, and powerful. It is alive, active, and powerful. One more time. This is our teaching technique. You have to say some things three times in order to get it into people's thinking and spirit and psyche and all of that good thing. The word of God is active, it's alive, it's active, and powerful. Somebody put those three words up on today. There's about uh, 40 of you watching right now. Put those three words up, alive, active, and powerful. Now, now when we talk about the word of God being alive, this actually speaks to the nature of God. Glory to God. My God, the word of God is is alive simply because we have a living God. Come on. You know, we, we, don't, we don't serve an idol God. Our God is not an inanimate, an inanimate object. Are you all getting this? You know, he's not something that's made by the hands of men. You know, it's not something that we have to put up on a shelf, you know, in order that we might see it, that we might believe. He's not a God that, that needs to be rescued, that if your house catches on fire, 
you would have to rescue you and your God. That's not the kind of God we serve, but we serve a God that is alive. That's the nature of God. He's a living God. My God, he lives. He lives from everlasting to everlasting. He's God. He's so living that he says that a day with me is as a thousand days. And a thousand, a day with me is as a thousand years, excuse me. And a thousand years is as one day. So he's always living. And this is the living proof of who God is. This is what the word of God is. The word of God is the living proof of who God is. Again, the word of God is the living proof of who God is. And then number two, I got to cut through here because I want to get through this on today. The word of God is active. Glory to God. The word of God is active. And when we talk about the word of God being active, this actually reveals the character of God. Now, now watch this. Just as God is living, we have to know that we don't serve a God, my God, that's a standstill God. He's active. He's moving. He's always operating on the behalf of his people. Glory to God. You know, so so that's why we could never as people of God, we should never, you know, become so tied to a movement, a time period. Am I talking to anyone on today? My God, we shouldn't become so tied to what God used to do that we miss what he's doing. Glory to God. There's many of you that are listening to me on today. My God, and I get it. You're praying that God take us back to the old days. You're praying that God takes us back, my God, to the way that things used to be. But let me help you on today. That's not how God operates. Glory to God. He doesn't operate, my God, just in what used to be. Yes, that was great. Yes, it was good, but we should never get so tied in to what God used to do that we miss what he's doing now because his word is active. It is active. This is the nature of God. He's constantly moving. God does not have to keep up with us, but we have to keep up with him. That's how some of us act. We act like God has to keep up with us and we try to box him in to how we want him to move, the way he wants us to do things. Are you all getting this? You know, we, 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 we think that we can box God into a time period to, to what he's already done and we, we stay, my God, in that place, my God, where we think God was operating and he was operating there. But he was saying, listen, because I'm an active God, I want you to come on up to where I am now. Glory to God. My God, I want you to come on up to where I am right now. My God. And the Bible says, yes, that he's the same. He does not change. And that's true. But in his not changing, we know that he's active. He's doing things that we haven't seen yet. Come on. First Corinthians chapter two and verse nine. He says that I'm going to give you the revelation. I'm going to reveal to you what no eye is seeing, what no ear has heard, what hasn't even entered into the hearts of men. That means that there are some new things that God wants to show us in this season of our lives that we have not seen yet. Glory to God. He's going to reveal it to us, the Bible says, to us through the spirit of God. He reveals to us what he's doing in this season. Glory to God. My God. So we've been, as we've been, you know, going through all of these series, we've been praying that God would show us something new. This is how he operates in his word. Just like I called you out of Egypt. Now I'm calling you into the promised land. Glory to God. And the day that you hear my voice, don't harden your heart. Just because you haven't seen it does not mean that God is not in it. Come on, somebody. He does things that we've yet to see. 
He's doing things that we haven't experienced yet. His word is active. He's an active God. And then watch this, alive, active, number three, number three, the word of God is powerful. Glory to God. Somebody put that up on today. The word of God is powerful. And when we talk about powerful, this actually reveals the essence of who God is. All right. We talked about the nature of God when we said God is living. We talked about the character of God, meaning God is active. And now we have to talk about the essence of God, which means that God is powerful. Glory to God. And when we talk about the word of God being powerful, this reveals the essence of God because watch this, whatever God speaks, he has the ability to accomplish what he has said. My God, somebody should have went into a full shout right there. Glory to God. Come on. I'm reminded in the book of Hebrews, in the book of Hebrew, not Hebrews, but Romans chapter four, when it talked about Abraham, God had made him a promise that he would be the father of many nations, and he didn't even have a child of his own. Glory to God. He didn't have a child of his own, but God promised him that he would be the, he would be the father of many nations. And if you all know the story of Abraham, not only did he not have a child, but it was impossible at this point for them to even have children. His wife was barren, and the Bible said that by now his body was dead as well. Glory to God. But watch this. The Bible said he yet hoped against hope, which means that he believed God when it was no more hope to be had. Now, I need you all to get this. How powerful is that, that you can actually believe God when the situation has gone from bad to worse and from worse to dead. The Bible said that he did not even consider the deadness of Cyril's womb, neither did he consider the deadness of his own body, but the Bible said that he was fully persuaded. Glory to God. He believed in God. Watch this. He believed in God who was able to call those things that be not as though they were. I need you all to get this on today. Glory to God. A lot of times we mess that scripture up because we begin talking about ourselves. Well, baby, just call those things that be not as though they were. But it wasn't talking about us. It was talking about God. That's God's job. Come on, somebody. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. This is Hebrews 11 and 3, so that things which are seen were not made by things which do appear. Glory to God. He believed and he trusted in the God who is able to call those things that be not as though they were. Listen, people of God, my God, there are some things right now in your life that are not. Glory to God. My God, you may not be completely healed. You may not have, my God, the thing that God showed you. Your vision may not have come to pass. You've got some knots in your life, but thank God that he is still the God that's able to call those things that be not as though they were. Watch this. I love that scripture. It says as though they were, which simply means that when God speaks, it's already past tense. It's already done. My God, it's already established. He believed them and he was fully persuaded, my God, that whatsoever God had promised, God himself was able to perform. I need you all to get that on today because watch this. When we talk about the word of God being powerful, God does whatever he needs to do to make sure that word is fulfilled in your life. Glory to God. You're not going to die in the wilderness like the children of Israel did. Come on, somebody. My God. Come on, Caleb. Caleb made it in because he believed God. Glory to God. He stood on the mountain when Moses sent out the 12 spies, 
He stood on the mountain. Matter of fact, if you read the history of that, he was the one that said, listen, let's go up at once and take it. My God, he was about 45 years old when, when, when he stood on that mountain. And guess what? My God, 45 years later, which made him about, what, 90 years old? Come on, somebody. He stood right there on that same mountain and said, listen, God made me the promise, and I believed him wholeheartedly that I would have this mountain. And this is what I like about Caleb. He said, I stayed faithful to God. And guess what? Even though I'm an old man, I'm better today. I have more strength today than I had, my God, 45 years ago. My God, my God, because God is faithful to his word. He's going to make sure that that word is accomplished in your life. Glory to God. Matter of fact, the essence of God says heaven and earth will pass away before my word fails. I'm the God that watches over my word to make sure that that word is performed. Glory to God. And it will happen just like God said. Glory to God. I got a lot more to deal with in this particular scripture, but I need to stop right here. Glory to God. But the word of God is alive. The word of God is active and the word of God is powerful. I need you all to take that throughout your day on today. Meditate on that. Commit that to memory. Um, Hebrews 4 and 12. Commit that to memory. My God, meditate on it. The word of God is alive. The word of God is active. Glory to God. And the word of God is powerful. Glory to God. My God, it's going to work in your favor if you believe. We're living by the mouth of God. Get your prayer request up. I'm going to pray with you. I'm going to pray for you. My God, this has been a wonderful time today in God's word. And again, my name is Maurice E. Gregory. This is the morning devotion. I want you all to share this video on today. My God, a matter of fact, if something has blessed you on today, I want you to post it um, on your social media and use the hashtag morning devotion. Let's get this word out. Um, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, um, get that like. I got I got six likes, six likes on today. And so let's get that. Let's get that number up. I think it's a few more of you over there watching today, and we appreciate that. Um, but just hit that thumbs up button. Um, hit the notification bell. Hit the subscribe button. And um, listen, tag someone in the video. Of course, Facebook, you know what to do. Um, tag someone. And uh, let's get this word out. Share the video. Um, I want to pray with you on today. Yes. My God, God, we love you. We praise you. We give you the glory. We thank you for all that you've done. Thank you for this time in your word. Thank you for the revelation of your word. And God, we thank you for your nature, your character, and the essence of who you are. Your word is alive. Your word is active. And your word is powerful. And God, we pray today that that word would come alive in us. We don't want to be like the children of Israel and harden our hearts so that we don't believe or trust you to do what you said. But God, we stand on your word today. We stand on your promises. Glory to God. We stand on the things that you have spoken into our lives. And God, we thank you on today because your word tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 10, that when your word goes out, it does not come back to you void, but it will accomplish that which you please, and it will prosper in the thing whereunto you sent it. God, we appreciate you on today, and we thank you for sending us your word on today. Bless your people. Some are sick in their bodies. Glory to God. Some need you to make a way for them. Some need you to open doors for them. Some need you to save a family member. They're standing in the gap for their family members on today. Some are addicted, God. Some are going through things, God, that, that are not of you. But, God, we know that you are a ray maker. And because your word is active, it's alive, it's powerful, we can come boldly before your throne, knowing that we're able to obtain mercy 
and the grace that will help us in the time of need. And God, we thank you. We praise you and we give you the glory. We just want to say that we love you and we appreciate all that you're doing in the lives of us, your people. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. God bless you. And again, God bless you. Listen, if you believe that God has answered your prayer on today and that it's already done, um, go ahead and put a praise up that's worthy of an answered prayer. Because guess what? Your prayer is getting ready to turn into your praise report. What you've been praying about, you're getting ready to testify about because God is getting ready to do it just for you. Listen, I got to go. Thank you all again for joining us. And um, if you want to correspond with us, if you have a prayer request, a praise report, or if you just want to correspond with us, send us an email um, at Morning Devotion 2017. Again, that's Morning Devotion 2017 at gmail.com. And um, listen, if you want to be a blessing to us, if this has been a blessing to you on today, um, you can be a blessing to us. Um, via the Cash App, Venmo, or Zelle. Um, all of your gifts um, go to help us to continue to do this work um, along with our evangelistic and missions work um, here in the United States and abroad as the Lord gives us strength. So if you want to do it through Cash App, that's dollar sign Morning Devotion 2017. If you want to use Venmo, just go over there and type in Morning Devotion. You'll see our logo. That's you know, above my head over there. And um, if you want to use Zell, use my personal email address, PastorMG97 um, at yahoo.com. All of your gifts are greatly appreciated. We're only asking for a dollar a day. Um, so that's $7 in the week, $30 in the month. So if you want to give for the month of April, um, that would be $30. Or if you just want to give for an entire year, that's $365. And um, thank you all for your support. Many of you give weekly, many of you give monthly. And um, we thank God for your support, for sowing into us and helping us to continue to do all that we do. Amen. And um, thank you um, to the um, special thanks to, to, um, to the two to the two individuals, um, <laughs> okay, I'm gonna put this up because it kind of shows where people are in their mindset, said, I do not pay $30 for ministry, I will not be sending you no $30, I think that's rude, so no, I don't want you. Well, thank God for you, prayerfully you enjoy the word, there's no pressure for anybody to give anything to me, all right? So you all pray for Jacinda and thank God for her. Amen. Amen. But listen, <laughs> I, I, I want to give I want to give a special thanks um, to Sister Nancy Bowman and also um, little sis, sis um, Deanna. Um, they're they're helping us to um, produce and and moderate, um, you know, um, the morning devotion. And they've taken this on. So um, we appreciate them. And um, thank God for their faithfulness. Listen, if you want to work with us, just let me know. And um, we'll find something for you all to do. Of course, there's plenty to do to help us to do this and to make it better. All right. So uh, we thank God for you. We appreciate you and we love you. And um, Lord willing, we'll see you all on tomorrow. Again, go ahead and share this. Share it, share it, share it. Let's get the word out. And um, we'll see you all on tomorrow morning. Until then, until then, you all be blessed. God bless you and thank you.